I financed a car from a dealership in a time in which many people, including myself, would consider it to be one of the worst times to buy a used or new car. Interest rates are high, car prices are still high, though they are on the cusp of taking a turn, and dealerships are still as greedy as ever. And yet I, someone who makes a living from talking about the car market, has purchased a used car in this market. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about why I'm going to talk about which car I purchased. And I'm going to talk about why there are some scenarios, even in this current car market, where buying a used car may actually make sense. So let's get started. The importance of mental health cannot be overstated, which is why I'm happy to introduce the sponsor of this video, BetterHelp. BetterHelp connects you with a licensed therapist who's trained to listen and give you unbiased, helpful advice. The reality is the act of traditional therapy can be incredibly daunting. From deciding that you need to go to therapy, finding a therapist, meeting face-to-face, -face, and then deciding if that therapist is actually a good fit. Sometimes the task of going to therapy can be so daunting that it prevents people from ever trying to go at all. But that's where BetterHelp can come in. BetterHelp can match you to one of over 30,000 therapists in their network, which gives you access to a wider range of expertise and you may have available in your area. And once you've found a therapist you want to talk to, you can have your therapy sessions over a phone call, a video chat, or even via messaging if you prefer that. I don't talk about it often at all on my channel, but back in 2018, whenever my first business closed, I was really struggling with my mental health, and I desperately needed to see a therapist. But not only was I embarrassed by the fact that I needed to go to therapy, I also couldn't afford it. And at that time, long before I started this YouTube channel, I actually signed up for BetterHelp. And I spoke to a therapist exclusively over chat because I wasn't comfortable doing it over video. And I know that in my case, it really gave me the help that I needed at the time. If you think that you could benefit from therapy, consider BetterHelp. You can click on the link in the description below, or you can visit www.betterhelp.com slash which gives you 10% off your first month of therapy. Thank you, BetterHelp, for sponsoring this video. Earlier this month, I bought a 2018 Lincoln Navigator L to add to my Turo fleet. This car is clean. While it is a select trim Lincoln, it has all of the bells and whistles to make it a reserve, which is actually Lincoln's second highest trim model. This car is extremely large. It has seven seats, though we will be buying a bench seat for the middle to make it eight. It has an extended rear, so even with the seats up, it has a ton of room. And the car is extremely bougie, featuring heated, cooled, and massaged seats, panoramic sunroof, automatic footstep that comes down when you unlock the car. It is extremely nice. This car had a sticker of over 90 grand back in 2018 whenever it was new, and my husband HP and I have purchased this car for $37,200 out the door. That includes taxes, title, registration, everything. And the car currently has 78,000 miles. So why did we buy this car despite the fact that the car market is still admittedly tough? Well, there are a few reasons. First and foremost is the fact that this car was just a good deal. The reality is this exact car market value is typically in the high 30s, and we ended up purchasing it for 37 out the door, which means that the actual purchase price of the vehicle itself was only about 33. This was well below market value, and my husband HP and I had been doing a ton of research on XL SUVs over the last few months, and so we knew that whenever we saw this Lincoln, it was a great deal. And we knew that once we found a car that was a great deal, we wanted to be able to jump on it. This car is also going to be listed on Turo, and at this point, we know the process of Turo claims and total losses like the back of our hands. And we know that if this car was theoretically totaled on Turo tomorrow, Turo would pay us something in the high 30s or low 40s for that total loss. And so with this purchase, we do have somewhat of a safety net given the fact that we not only purchased this car for below market value, but we know that it's also in good condition. It's relatively low miles for the year. And so we know because of these factors that this was actually a pretty good purchase, despite the fact that the car market is still inflated as a whole. Though, like I mentioned a moment ago, it is taking a turn slowly but surely. I talk about it all the time on my channel, but there are still good deals in this car market. A few examples of just the cars that I've purchased this year include my $5,300 Volvo, my $7,000 Mercedes, my $4,300 Mazda, or my $5,000 Scion IQ. The fact is, there are a lot of good deals out there. Sure, you do have to look at them, but they do exist not only on Facebook Marketplace, but also from dealerships. In fact, we bought this Lincoln from a franchise dealership, and despite that, we are still able to get a below market value price on this car. It's also important to know that this was a car that we have never purchased before. We've never owned an XL SUV, and we certainly haven't rented one on Turo. 
So we knew that before we purchased this car, we needed to do our due diligence to figure out how much we should pay for this car, how much it can realistically rent on Turo, and we just needed to make sure that our expectations would meet reality whenever we finally did buy this car. And once we did all of our research, we really had the confidence to move forward once we figured out what a below market value deal actually would be, which in the case of this Lincoln was that below $35,000 price range, which is exactly what we paid. The second reason that we purchased this car right now is because of section 179 tax deductions. I'm not going to go into a ton of details here because I don't want to be that social media guru telling you that you can own a car for free if you utilize section 179 because the reality is that isn't entirely true. But despite the fact that it isn't entirely true, there are still some killer benefits that you can take advantage of if you buy a car that adheres to the section 179 guidelines. Section 179 is a deduction that business owners can take advantage of with large 6,000 pound or more cars and this Lincoln Navigator L is over 6,000 pounds. The exact rules surrounding section 179 are actually going to be changing in 2024. So about six months ago, I had a meeting with my accountant and he had actually told me that if I was looking to potentially buy an SUV or if I needed a new car for business, I should consider getting an XL SUV and I should consider making that purchase before the end of the year in order to reap as much tax benefits as possible. And so that's exactly what I did. And prior to this conversation with my accountant, my husband and I knew that we wanted to at some point get a three row SUV. It really wasn't a matter matter of if, it was just simply a matter of when, and this conversation that I had with my accountant really expedited that process. Though we probably would have bought one within the next six months to a year anyways, because we've been wanting to add one to our Turo fleet for a while. Now, I use Shared Economy Tax as my accountant. I absolutely love them, and I recommend them to anyone who's looking for an accountant. If you're interested in checking out their services or learning more about Shared Economy Tax, I do have a link to their website down in the description below. A third factor with this purchase was not only the interest rate, but also the fact that I wanted to build my credit with the this car. I've talked a lot on my channel about the fact that back in 2018, I really hurt my credit whenever a business that I owned at the time had closed. And over the years, I've been working really hard to build my credit back up. But the thing is, without loans, your credit will only go up so high with credit cards alone. And while I have been utilizing credit cards over the years and I pay them off every single month with a holding a balance, my credit score has just slowly but surely been moving and it hasn't been moving as fast as I'd like. So this year I decided that I would take out a loan under my personal name and that would be the method that I would use in order to try to boost my credit even more. So whenever HP and I were deciding that we wanted to buy an XL three row SUV, we decided to finance this car under my personal name in order to give myself a credit boost. We knew that the interest rate on this loan would probably suck, but we weren't planning on keeping the loan for very long, and we actually have plans to pay off this loan within 12 to 18 months. And because of this, even a terrible interest rate wouldn't be that impactful because of the short period of time that we plan to actually hold the loan. This is especially important because whenever the 6th Gen Toyota 4Runner comes out, which is supposed to happen next year, I want to make sure that I have a decent credit score so that I can get approved and buy that car brand new once it's released. And the interest rate on that car will be significantly more important because I most likely wouldn't be paying that off in 12 to 18 months. So it seemed as though this Lincoln Navigator would be the perfect opportunity to build my credit relatively quickly. But one big surprise that did come out of this purchasing process was my interest rate that I got on this car. I was preparing myself for anywhere between a 12 to 15 percent interest rate given the fact that this is technically what the average interest rate is for my credit score range. But through my local credit union, I was actually able to be approved for a 6.55 percent interest rate, which I was excited ecstatic about. This again was sort of just icing on the cake because the reality is we were going to buy this car even if I had an absolutely horrific interest rate. Like I mentioned a moment ago, the fact that we were planning on paying this off so quickly, it meant that the interest rate really didn't matter. But the fact that I got approved for a 6.55% rate well, it was really encouraging. Now, many of the topics that I've talked about in this video thus far explain why we chose an XL3 row SUV, why we decided to finance, and why we decided to buy a car today rather than wait maybe six months or a year from now. But as far as why we chose the Lingen Navigator L specifically, well, there are a few reasons for that too. And for the most part, it has everything to do with perceived value. I've talked about this a lot on my channel in the past, and this is not the first time that I've purchased a car that has a high perceived value. And it's not the first time that I've really emphasized high perceived value. Now, for those of you who don't know what high perceived value is, whenever I talk about this on my channel, I'm more often than not talking about it in the context of Turo. And what high perceived value is, is it's basically whenever a car looks expensive, maybe at one point it was expensive, or maybe it just has a bougie name associated with it, but for whatever reason, people really associate wealth to this specific car. But in reality, the car itself actually isn't that expensive, at least not compared to where it once was or where comparable cars are priced at. And because high 
hyperseed value cars are associated with a certain level of status, they oftentimes get rented for a higher amount on Turo. A textbook example of a hyperseed value car is a Maserati Ghibli. These cars can cost in the low $30,000 range for a good one, and yet they can rent on Turo for $100 per day or more. And this is a price point that's closer to cars that cost 60 grand. Another great example is an Audi R8. A used R8 can cost 60 grand relatively easily, and these cars can rent for $200 per day or more. This is a price range that's closer to cars that cost over 100 grand to purchase. A BMW i8 would also fit into this category. Looks extremely expensive, is actually relatively cheap in comparison, and it can rent for a high daily rate. And in the case of this Lincoln Navigator, this car once cost 90 grand, and people see the car and they think it's very, very expensive, but in reality, it was $37,000. And don't get me wrong, $37,000 is still a lot of money, but whenever we talk about this in the context of the car market, it's only about 20% more than the average cost of a used car, and yet this car I think will easily be able to be rented on Turo for between $100 and $125 per day, which is much higher than a non high perceived value car car on Turo that costs around the same price point. High perceived value is also the reason why we chose a Navigator over something like a Ford Expedition. You guys may recall a few months back, I talked about buying an Expedition Max, and this is what we purchased in place of that car. The Expedition Max, from a size perspective, had everything that we were looking for. It had all of the features we really needed, it had a ton of space, it had three rows, and it had that extra cargo space that the L has. But it just doesn't have that high value perception. Because of this, believe it or not, even though the Navigator L and the Expedition Max are in the same price range, the Expedition Max rents for about 20 to 30% less than the Navigator. I've said it many times on this channel before, but the car market isn't going to crash overnight. Prices are going to continue to go down month over month, and the reality is if you need a new car, you probably need one today. And so I think that the best advice out there whenever it comes to buying a used or new car in this market is to do your research and be prepared. And definitely check out your local credit union. Like always, you guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, comments, if you have anything to add, I would love to hear it. So make sure to leave a comment down below. And while you guys are at it, make sure to hit the like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit the notification bell. And I will see you guys in the next video.